Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the BTC500DP plasma cutter from Bestark. This machine uses inverter technology with smaller transformers and higher switching frequencies to rectify the AC input power to DC, which makes for a lighter and smaller machine with a higher power density that can output up to 50 amps of current when connected to a 220 volt power source to cut up to 60 millimeter thick steel. It can also operate on 110 volts, but the output current will be limited to cutting a max thickness of 12 millimeters at just 35 amps, and the input current will be as much as 45 amps. So a standard 110 volt circuit with 14 2 wire protected by a 15 amp breaker isn't sufficient to power it safely. I have a 40 amp 110 volt circuit in the workshop for running high power equipment, so that's what I use to power this machine. It also has pilot arch, so there's no need to touch the torch to the work surface to get the plasma started. You just need to set the gap between the torch and the work surface and pull the trigger. A digital display is built in to enhance user experience by allowing you to fine-tune settings, monitor real-time status, and provide error codes to help make it easier to troubleshoot if something goes wrong. The kit includes the plasma cutter, a length of hose and a couple of hose clamps for connecting an air compressor, a ground clamp and cutting torch with some spare consumables, and a 110 to 220 volt plug adapter. The ground clamp uses a DINs 25 connector with an 8 gauge transmission cable and has a thick braided copper cable connecting each side of the clamp to lower resistance. The rubber air hose is reinforced but it's really flexible. Unfortunately, it didn't come with any fittings for connecting to the plasma cutter or an air compressor, so I installed my own. The torch seems to be good quality and includes a trigger guard for safety and a standoff guide on the tip to help clumsy people like me to maintain the optimal 564 inch standoff distance between the torch and the workpiece, and to serve as a guide for cutting with straight edges and templates. The 110 to 220 volt power adapter has thick 10 gauge wire to handle the extra current demand, but as mentioned earlier, a 40 amp circuit is needed to run this machine at full power on 110 volts. Something else that didn't come with the machine but should be installed on the airline is a desiccant air filter like this one, which I picked up at our local tool supply store for around $20. Any moisture in the air will affect the characteristics of the plasma, which in turn will affect performance and cut quality, as well as cause the consumables to wear out faster. Before I start testing, I wanted to walk you through the functions on the digital display. The output current can be adjusted with the dial on the right and ranges from 15 to 35 amps at 110 volts and 15 to 50 amps at 220 volts. The output air pressure can be adjusted by clicking the left arrow button to switch from cut mode to air mode and then turning the regulator dial. You can also change between 2 touch and 4 touch with the middle switch with two touch meaning that you press and hold the trigger to start cutting, then release to stop cutting, and four touch meaning that you press and release the trigger to start cutting, then press and release again to stop. The last arrow button allows you to adjust the pilot arc time and post flow time to keep the air flowing through the torch for a range of 3 to 15 seconds after cutting to help cool it down. The first cut that I made was through a piece of 3mm thick wall square steel tubing, and the settings that I used were 20 amps at 38 psi. I did own another 60 amp machine before this one, and it's been a couple of years since I've used it. But I chose these numbers based on that limited experience because they're similar machines, so it should be a good starting point for gauging what this one can do and how to adjust the settings as I progress to cutting thicker material with it.
The torch didn't skip a beat, and cut through the tubing without any trouble. There is a bit more dross than there should be, but that's on me. I think I moved a lot slower than I should have, and given that this is the first cut, I'm sure these settings aren't optimal. I'll have to spend a lot more time adjusting and testing to find the Goldilocks zone for different materials and thicknesses, but I'm happy with this for now, so I moved on to cutting a rusty piece of 6mm steel plate using 28 amps at 38 psi. Again, the machine worked great. The cut is straight and relatively clean, and the edges are nearly 90 degrees, so that's a good sign that it can handle cutting something thicker like this piece of 9mm steel plate. For this cut, I maxed the current dial at 35 amps. I think I should have increased the air pressure to around 50 psi, but it still worked great regardless. I'm pretty impressed with this little machine. Next I wanted to try something a bit different, so I set the machine back to the settings that I used for the 6mm plate to cut a piece of stainless steel flat bar. I've never cut stainless steel with a plasma cutter before, so I'm sure I definitely need to play around with the settings a bit more for a cleaner cut, but it can cut it nonetheless. What I was really curious about is whether or not it can cut something soft like aluminum. All I had was this 3mm thick sheet, so I set the current to the lowest level at 15 amps at 30 psi and tried that. It didn't quite make it through that pass, so I increased the current to 20 amps and the air pressure to 35 psi and tried again. This time it cut through, and the edge isn't the cleanest, but it's reasonably straight. Good enough for rough cutting parts at least. So that's going to wrap up this video. While this is definitely not a powerhouse, it does pack a good punch for its small size and overall it worked really well. My only complaint is that the air regulator can spin around in the enclosure while you're making adjustments if the plastic nut that secures it comes loose. I think some sort of metal bracket to secure it to the enclosure would be ideal. But other than that, I think it's a nice little machine. Let me know what you think of it in the comments too. Thanks for watching and take care folks.